Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at a new device from OC called the GoStream Deck. And basically what it is, an HDMI switch box, an audio video mixer, kind of all built into one. Now it's not too dissimilar, say, from the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. However, this device has some more tactile buttons and dials and sliders and things that you can use, as well as some additional features that I think can be very useful. And as a bonus, you'll get a little behind the scenes look on how I create my videos and educational material for my YouTube channel. Uh, but I do need to disclose that they did send this device out to me for free, but no money has changed hands. They're not seeing this video before I publish it. And as always, I'll give you my honest opinion. So with that said, let's get started. So welcome to my humble studio here where I put together all of my videos and uh, education material for other places and my YouTube channel. And uh, that's where I'm gonna focus my attention to on the use case for this device is for content creators and educators. So let's just start with a big picture view of everything here, and then I'll talk about how the uh, GoStream Deck actually ties this all together. Let's start with the laptop here. It's basically a high-end Windows gaming laptop, and I have OBS and DaVinci Resolve installed. And OBS, of course, I use for the uh, live streaming, but I also use it to uh, record all of the content coming in from these cameras uh, onto the computer. And then once they're all recorded, uh, I bring them into DaVinci Resolve that you see here. That's my video editor kind of cut up and edit everything and add music or pictures, things like that. And then I have these uh, two monitors attached. It just spreads everything out and makes the workflow a lot easier. Uh, and then let's talk about the cameras. I have uh, camera number one over here. This is my main, this is my headshot camera. Uh, you guys have probably seen this a lot before in the past. I'll switch to it now. And of course, this probably looks very familiar, right? Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon. <laughs> uh, and then um, camera number two is over here. Uh, this is my top-down camera. This is where I do the uh, settings on the cameras or, you know, walking through the menus or maybe doing uh, product shots, things like that. I use camera number two here, uh, and that's what this looks like. Again, of course, you guys have probably seen this many times as well, right? And then uh, I have camera number three, which is uh, the behind-the-scenes camera here. And this is something I haven't used uh, enough. I should probably use this more in my live streams just to add a little bit more variety to the camera angles during the live streams, make it more interesting, etc. But that's camera number three. And then uh, this is new for today only. I probably won't use this uh, after this uh, video. But this camera number four, and this is a top-down shot. Uh, of the uh, device that I'm talking about, the OC GoStream Deck. And this so you can easily see all the buttons I'm pushing and dials I'm turning when I start showing you the features of this device. And this is a new addition to my studio, it's the Loop Deck. It's basically a programmable keyboard. I use it primarily to uh, control OBS and for my live streaming. And then for audio, I'm just using a uh, wireless microphone system and uh, that's the receiver here plugged into the uh, GoStream Deck. And then uh, the transmitter here is just under my shirt. And then finally, I have this uh, LED lighting for my key light. And then I have an RGB light here that I can change colors on. Today, I'm just using uh, purple. Now let's talk about the GoStream deck and how this ties everything together, because this is where I have all four cameras coming into this deck uh, via HDMI. I also have all the audio sources going into this deck via the 3.5 millimeter jack. In this case, I'm just using a single wireless microphone. Uh, and then I have two HDMI outs. I have one HDMI out going to this little monitor here, and the HDMI out is displaying the multi-view, which shows me what all four cameras are doing in addition to all the audio levels, and as well as any graphics and uh, media that I might have loaded into an SD card on here, and I'll talk about this a little bit later. Uh, and then also, um, I have the other HDMI port going out into a USB-C to HDMI, back into my computer uh, just for this video so I can record uh, the uh, menu systems and everything and, and show you exactly what I'm seeing when I set this device up. But normally you could use that second HDMI port to go out to say maybe an 85 inch monitor or television. So like at a live event, uh, people will see you know everything that you want them to see via this deck. Uh, they're not going to see the multi-view. They're going to see the final program output. So, you know, there, there's a lot of uses for two HDMI outputs, uh, which a lot of devices don't have at this price point. All right, let's take a quick look at the uh, ports on the back of the device. Uh, so we have three standard 3.5 millimeter jacks here. Two of them are for your uh, microphone inputs. And then we have one output here for, say, example, uh, headphones, or maybe you want to daisy chain to another audio mixing device, what have you. And then here are the four HDMI inputs for the cameras. Uh, 
Uh, and then here are the two outputs, which will go to uh, different monitors. And this can be uh, configured differently as well. So you could have maybe the multi-view here, and then have um, maybe the program mode showing through here, or you can uh, make it work as a pass-through and display any of these individual ports. And then the two USB-C ports here, we have one output, this goes to your computer. So the IOC device will become sort of like a virtual webcam when OBS sees it. And then we have an input here, and you can actually attach a webcam to this device, making this uh, capable of actually five inputs. In the future, they're supposedly gonna be able to use NDI devices as well. Uh, it seems like it's going to be the NDI HX format, but uh, it's not available quite yet, but it's supposedly it's in the works and firmware. And then over here, we have the Ethernet port, and you would connect this directly to your internet router, uh, where you can actually stream directly from this device to Facebook, YouTube, uh, you know, Zoom, what have you. And then finally, we have the standard 12-volt DC input here, and the uh, AC adapter is included in the box. And then finally, the specifications for the input and outputs for the HDMI ports. We can do a maximum of 1080 60p in and 1080p 60p out. And here's a look at it in real life of the cable inputs that I use. This, of course, is my microphone input here. These are the four camera inputs, uh, HDMI. These are the two HDMI outputs. And then this is the USB-C out going to the computer. And then finally, we have the 12-volt uh, jack. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a way to hook up an Ethernet. Uh, the router is just too far away from this device. And then coming around to the sides, we have air vents on either side. So this device is passively cooled. There's no uh, fan or anything like that to make noise. And then in the front, we have an SD card slot. And I'll talk more about this later when we get into the uh, operations. Now let's look at all the buttons and dials. And overhead here, I have the uh, multi-view overlaid. So if I push any buttons, you can see what happens in the multi-view. Uh, but starting here, we have the power button. You just double tap to turn on, push and hold to turn off. Uh, we have the live or go live button here. So if this were hooked up to the internet router, um, you can actually stream to three different streaming services at the same time. You just have to enter the uh, stream keys and or servers uh, via the menu here, and I'll come back to this. Now over here, we have the uh, sound mixing board where we have microphone one, you can see I have that turned on and I can use the dial to adjust the uh, levels or inputs of that. And then I can select mic two and turn it on or off. And then we have the uh, sound from each individual HDMI port here, one, two, three, four. And if you had the uh, microphones hooked up to each individual camera, you can add the sound from those individual cameras into the mix. Uh, and then down here we have the auxiliary and this is typically for like, if you have any kind of media stored on the SD card, uh, you could add the sound from any kind of movies uh, directly this way. Uh, and then um, over here we have the program. So this is so you can adjust the overall volume of all these uh, sounds mixed together. And then we have audio follows video. And this is handy like if I'm switching from camera one to camera two to camera three, uh, basically it'll pick up the audio from the individual uh, HDMI ports and send that to the program uh, or send that exclusively to the program and not mix. So I'm not going to do that. I typically just use the one mic to uh, have all my audio. All right, then over here we have eight macro buttons where you can store a sequence of uh, key pushes and menu items into the macro. So if you want to set up a sequence or chain of events and save that so you can recall it very quickly later, uh, you can do that here. So uh, right now we have five of these lit up. These have been pre-programmed by default uh, to do picture in picture. So if I push memory one, and I'll demonstrate this later, it'll pop up a little picture in the left corner, right corner, bottom left, bottom right, and then this deactivates the picture in picture. And if you want to program a new sequence of events, you just push and hold one of the uh, buttons that are not lit up, and it'll start blinking, letting you know it's in record mode. And then I can just start pushing buttons, and it'll record these you know, in the sequence that I have them. And then when I'm done, I just simply push and hold. And now it's recorded. So as you can see, it stays lit up. And that tells me that I do have something saved. And then if I'm going to clear this, I just push and hold it again until it starts blinking. So I let go. And then I'll just push it again without pushing any other keys. And now this um, uh, macro memory spot has been uh, cleared. And you can save the macros onto the SD card for later use. So maybe you have multiple different macro uh, scenarios that you want to use for different kinds of events. Uh, that would be possible. 
via the SD card. All right, then over here we have the menu button. And if we push this, if you look at the uh, multi view above, you'll see that a menu popped up. And then through a series of clicks and rolls here on the dial, I can navigate the uh, menu and change settings here. And I'll show you some more in detail later. So let me close that down. And then over here we have our play and record buttons. You can actually record the entire program view onto the SD card here. You don't need a computer. And uh, it only records the uh, single audio track coming through the program view. Uh, it doesn't do like the uh, multi-track ISO type recording where you have all separate tracks from every single audio source. But it's still very handy. Uh, so you can you know, basically record the entire show into uh, internally on the device. Then when you get back to uh, on site, uh, you can take the memory card out and start editing the video directly. Again, you don't need a computer on, in the field if you take this out. Uh, and then the play button, of course, it'll actually play any pre-recorded uh, streams, I'm sorry, pre-recorded uh, things that you've done with this device, or you can add your own movies uh, onto the card that you want to play back uh, maybe to an audience. And then over here, we have two on-air buttons, and then we have key, DSK for downstream something, and then background. I haven't quite mastered this because I've never used a feature like this before, but basically this is for uh, green screening and overlaying things on top of your existing uh, inputs. And, uh, you know, I can show you a green screen. I'll do that a little bit later of how to use that, but uh, I'm not sure exactly how to do the DSK and background, what these do exactly. And then down here is all of the switching for the audio from the different sources, including any stills you might have saved. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But we have two rows here. This is the program. This is what's actually going to be live and coming out through the USB into your computer, potentially, or being recorded into the SD card. Uh, down here, you can preview the next video that you want to uh, switch to or the next camera you want to switch to. So. For example, right now we're on camera four, which is displaying this device itself. And if I want to switch to camera two, which is the uh, uh, my camera there on top of the uh, cutting mat, I would just uh, switch it. I can do a cut, which does an instant, or I can do auto, where it's going to use one of the transition keys here. So right now it's on mix, and it just uh, transitions slowly. And I'll show you the dip where it just dips to a color first, then comes back. And then I'll show you the uh, wipe where it just kind of wipes left to right. And then if you want to preview what the uh, transition is going to look like, you can do that. And if you look at the um, uh, multi view window up there, I can preview what the wipe is going to look like before I actually do it. So um, I'll turn that off and uh, I'll just put it back to mix. That's kind of my favorite one there. The other option you have is with the T-bar, so I can just kind of mix it this way manually at any speed that I want. If I want to do it halfway and then continue, or if I want to do a wipe, I can just kind of wipe just halfway in and then continue, and then of course the dip. So this gives you a little bit more control over the transitions between the different cameras. So as you can see, you can do a lot of things directly from the keyboard without ever having to go in the menu. And I'm pretty much using the uh, default settings that came. So it's just straight out of the box. It's ready to start using to create content. So let me just do a quick demo of uh, what you can do when you have multiple cameras set up and plugged into this and how I use it to uh, create my educational content. All right, so what you're looking at now is multi-view output from the uh, OC deck into my monitor. And this is what I look at normally when I'm doing or creating my content. So what I would normally do is I want to start with my headshot. So I'm going to uh, choose camera number one, uh, just preview it first and make sure everything is framed properly and that the lighting looks good. And then I'll also look in the bottom uh, uh, right corner at the audio levels to make sure that audio is coming in. Uh, and if everything looks good, then I'll go ahead and go into uh, push the auto button. And then this will transition to camera number one so I can start my intro and what I'm going to be showing you. And then uh, when I'm ready or when I'm done with that, I can transition over to camera number two. So I'm going to preview camera number two. And I'm just going to make sure everything's lined up and straight here uh, before I start. Uh, and then once I'm ready, I'll just go ahead and I'll just use the T-bar this time and transition over. And this is where I will start to, you know, turn the camera on and show you different settings. And then when I'm done, I can transition back to camera number one and, you know, kind of review what we just did. 
Uh, also, if I wanted to do the picture in picture where you can see me talking uh, at the same time as I'm displaying something, uh, if you remember the uh, program, uh, the, the memory keys up here are programmed by default to be picture in picture. So let me go ahead and just uh, preview what that would look like. So if I want to be in the top left corner, if you're looking in the uh, preview window over here, uh, you can see I have my headshot there or uh, it's pre-programmed to go to number two, number three, number four. So let's just do a uh, top left corner and then transition over. And now while I'm demonstrating what's uh, the settings and stuff on the camera, you know, you have the headshot of me talking and I can go into the menu and enlarge or, or shrink the uh, picture in picture window if I wanted to, but I'm pretty good with, or, you know, I like the default setting. It seems just fine. Just, just enough so it doesn't cover everything up and not so small you can't see what's going on, right? All right, now while we're in the multi-view window, let me show you a couple of other things. So I'm going to turn off the uh, picture in picture first. And if you look at the bottom of the multi-view window or just below me here, you'll see four boxes which represent cameras one, two, three, and four, or the four HDMI inputs. And then below that, you actually have uh, UVC, still one, still two, and then the audio meters. The UVC is basically the uh, video content that's on your SD card, uh, whether you recorded it in the device itself or you added the movies directly uh, onto the SD card. And then still one and still two, you can store, you know, as, I, as many pictures as you want onto the SD card, but then you go into the menu and you select the ones that you want to have ready at the touch of a button on the keyboard. So, for example, if I just wanted to display the two cameras, still number one, um, I can just preview it first to make sure it looks good. So we're looking at the preview window now, just, just above my head here. And then I want to transition that uh, automatically into the program mode. And this is what actually will get recorded or output to the computer. Um, and then I can choose uh, still number two. Let me preview that. Um, that looks pretty good. So then I'll just transition that over. And then if I want to play the movie instead, like let's say I'm doing a live stream and I just want to play a movie before I start the live stream, I do that time to time. Uh, what I can do is select the auxiliary and the movie's there, and then all I have to do is, uh, let's see, push play, and then transition over to the movie. And I just used the T-bar at that time. What I want to do now is go into the menu and give you an overview of the different settings that you have there. Uh, and then I'll do a couple of specific things like the uh, chroma key and then also how to add a USB webcam so you actually have five video sources that you can control through this device. All right, to go into the menu, you just push this button here, then you can navigate uh, rotating and clicking this dial here. And you can see that the menu is popped up and overlaid on the bottom right. And I'm just gonna go into a couple of these, but like super source is interesting. I have this enabled and it's going to pick up uh, HDMI port one and HDMI port two. And then as a background, it's gonna use still number two, as you can see in the multi-view. Uh, so to activate this, what I do is I just push the black button here uh, like that. And then you can see I have HDMI 1 and HDMI 2, which is my camera. And then the background, I have still number 2 uh, in the background. And then uh, let's go into key type. And I'm going to set this to chroma key because I want to show you how to do a green screen. So I'll come back to this. And then the chroma key, there's a bunch of stuff here where you can... Uh, what background do you want? I'll use still number two, and then you can mask and make adjustments here and resize. Uh, I'm not going to go into all of that, but there's so many options there. Uh, picture in picture. Again, this is for like resizing and moving things around. Uh, the macros they set up here are perfectly fine for me, but if you want to mess with that, you can. There's a, a bunch of transitions here that you can choose from and settings. It's very, very customizable. And then DSK, again, I, I'm not that familiar with how to use this, so I'm going to leave this alone. Uh, then the audio mixer. Uh, if you want to go in here and set everything with a little more precision in terms of, you know, how much gain and balance and fade, and there's even audio syncing delay, if you need that, uh, you can do that. 
I find it easier just to just use the mixing board here on top and just adjust it manually. And I put my headphones on and I just listen and make sure the sound looks right. And then I also look at the uh, level meters, you know, going up and down. I don't really need to go in the menu for that. The still generator is where you set up uh, what JPEGs do you want as stills ready to go. And, you know, the still buttons are right here. Here's one and two. So you can have two coming in at a time, uh, but no more. But you can have an unlimited number of stills on your SD card, but you set them here. Which two do you want? And you can see the two that I picked, the cameras and the window. And then these are your uh, streaming keys and things that you put in. So there's YouTube. So you have to set all that up manually. And then you can save those settings to your SD card if you want and, and bring them back later. Uh, and then in here, there's a bunch of stuff in here. So I can rename the sources. Uh, I can set up what uh, the audio meters that I want to show. And then the multi-view layout, uh, I change this so that the program is on the right side. I'm just used to that. Uh, market, this actually should say marker. So it's a little bit of a typo, but this just brings up grid lines. And let's see, mic input. Okay, in the mic input, let me go back there. Uh, in the mic input, you can set this up for mic so it amplifies the signal slightly. Uh, you have mic plus power, so if you're using a condenser mic, uh, it'll provide power to that. I, I'm using wireless mics, so they have their own batteries, but some microphones need a little bit of power. It's not the 48 volt phantom power for like an XLR, it's just condenser mic stuff. Or you can set the, the input jacks to be line level where it doesn't amplify anything. You're probably my, my audio probably dropped right there, right? So sorry about that, but you get the idea there. And then the record file, this is where you can rename the chord file. So you just kind of scroll around like this, and there's a bunch of different things you can rename. But you, you get there eventually. It's kind of very old school, right? Without a keyboard, you just uh, roll around. But uh, And then here you set your uh, color inputs. I set mine to 422 full, but I recommend you probably just do auto to start out with. And then once you're more familiar with your gear, you can set those to whatever they need to be. Uh, out format I have to 1080p 30. That's what's going to be recorded to the SD card and also uh, what gets output through the USB port to OBS. And again, I set the uh, colors to the same color space as my inputs. And then the output source, this is for the two HDMI cables that go out. Uh, normally you would set one, say, to program view. Uh, and that would go to, say, a giant monitor for the audience to watch. And then the other one, uh, you would just leave on multi-view. But for to make this video, I have them both set to multi-view, so I can show you how to, you know, the menu and everything I'm showing you now. Uh, quality, you can set the high, medium, or low. And this is, again, what gets recorded onto the SD card. So high is about 30 megabits per second, and medium runs around 9 megabits, and then low is about 3 megabits per second, just for reference. Um, I always record in high. I mean, you know, you, with a 256 card in the uh, device, you'll get, you know, 10, 20 hours of recording if you want. I think even at high. Network, uh, that's if you use the Ethernet cable, and it's going to automatically connect if you have DHCP, so not much to do there. And then we have the panel brightness. So if you're working outdoors, you can make the uh, key brighter, as you can see here. Uh, for indoor use, I just keep it dim as possible so I'm not blinded. And then uh, we have language and reset. So if you reset the device back to factory defaults, uh, you know, because if you made a lot of changes and then something's not working right, you can just reset everything and start over. And then this is where you format the SD card and it'll automatically create some subfolders for your macros, your videos, your stills. So, um, Again, I've formatted up to 256 gig in here. You can probably format a 512 if you can do 256, but I don't have a 512. The last thing I want to show you, let me see if it's in here. Yeah, source selection. All right, so down here, I have the auxiliary button, which is on the keyboard here, set to the SD card. So this allows me, for example, to play that uh, video. If I push play here, you can see the video playing now. 
And then I can have that switch to the uh, program view by hitting the aux button. And that's, when it, that's what's going to be output or an, and recorded to the SD card. However, uh, I can change this to auxiliary or USB camera. I have a USB camera plugged in here. And if I select that, like so, it should switch. Yeah, there we go. So now I have a fifth video source coming in. And then I hit the same aux button here. And now I have the USB camera set up uh, to be as one of the uh, video inputs. But I'm going to change it back to SD card because I don't need five video cameras. All right, so it took me a few minutes to set up the green screen. So let me show you how I did that. Uh, so basically what you see here is uh, the source is uh, input number three. And if you look in, you know, down below at the preview, you can see input number three is a camera pointing at that green screen. And it's a fold-out one, so it doesn't cover the entire uh, space, right? So in that situation, I go to the next item and I enable masking. And this is where, you know, I dialed in to cut out that piece over there. And then I did that for the top, bottom, and sides, and uh, a little bit on the bottom. And then uh, I don't need to resize it, uh, but I think that looks okay. And then uh, for the control, what I did was, is you enable this, and then if you look in the preview window, you might be able to see like a little tiny square. Uh, and what you do is you move that square around to whatever color you want to be the uh, chroma key. So I'll just set it to that. And then down here, uh, let me go ahead and disable that now that I've done that. Uh, down here, I just set the foreground and background until it kind of balances right. So that's pretty close right there. Let's go to 100%. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, the background and foreground. See, so you mess with these dials until it looks just right. And uh, then the edges... See what that does. Oh, that's just for the edges right around me. So 50% is a good number. And that's all I did for the chroma key. So let me go sit over there for camera three. All right, so now I'm sitting in the chair and this is what the green screen looks like. I had to increase the lighting in here quite a bit to make everything look as clean as possible. And that's, that's why personally I stopped doing green screening because it was just so much trouble to get the lighting right, to get the green screen ironed out and flat. Uh, it's, it's a lot of extra work. Uh, I guess once you have it set up, it's okay. But, you know, I had to set up and tear down every other week and it was just too much hassle. So I stopped doing green screens. Now, I've been using this device uh, daily for the last two months now. And uh, I think I can kind of summarize the pros and cons of this device. And then also I'll share with you some of the issues that have come up that have for the most part been resolved. But uh, I think you need to know. So one of the biggest pros of this device is all of the features you get at this price point. Right now it's $295 and uh, it's priced basically the same as the uh, Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. And yet with this device, you get two HDMI output ports, you get the uh, couple of physical dials and a T-bar, and you also get the ability to, to record and save things onto the SD card. You know, your macro functions, uh, images, video, you know, it's it's a whole production unit kind of all packed into one. And the fact that you don't need additional software to use all of the features. You know, you got the sound mixer, you got the macros. Uh, like I said, you got the uh, SD card with the images and video that you can add to your production or program. And you don't need any other software. You can do it all in this device. And, and I've seen other reviews of this device where they've taken it out into the field with no laptop. They just hooked up a couple monitors, plugged in the SD card, and recorded the entire production right onto the SD card. Uh, so that that is a huge pro, I think, for a lot of people uh, where you don't need an additional uh, laptop or software. Now, some of the cons of this device, and this is compared to the Blackmagic Mini, right, is that uh, there is no software. And I mentioned that as a pro, but it's, it can also be a con, especially in my situation where I'm just using it in the studio. I really wouldn't mind having an app to control everything via keyboard and mouse rather than, you know, going and diving into the menu. Now, that said, it's easy enough. Once I set everything up, I don't really have to touch it again, but it is kind of a hassle 
to dive into that menu via just a single dial and click. Uh, the other thing is there's no way to control it remotely via network. Uh, so if you have the device set up closer to the event on site, and maybe you need to be further back away, right, and not sitting right there in the middle of everything, uh, that could be a con. You can't control this remotely over the network. Uh, the other uh, con really is when it's recording to the SD card, uh, or really anything for that matter, there's no uh, ISO, meaning you can't record separate audio tracks for each input. Everything is recorded into a single audio track. It's all mixed together in, into one audio file. Uh, and if you're doing podcasting and interviews and things like that, uh, that may be an issue if your workflow involves dealing with multiple sound sources and you need to mix them yourself in post-production, uh, you're not going to be able to do that with this device. And then finally, uh, it's not compatible directly, say, with DaVinci Resolve, like the Blackmagic A10 Mini, right? Because, you know, Blackmagic makes DaVinci Resolve, so they have this built-in compatibility, I guess, with DaVinci Resolve. I don't know what those features are, but that would be a con if you're currently using DaVinci Resolve like I do, and there, there's some feature that you need in the Mini Pro, uh, you may need to go that direction just for that workflow compatibility. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I just put everything into OBS and record on my computer, and then I bring those into DaVinci Resolve. But I can see where if you have a workflow that involves DaVinci Resolve, uh, you may need to get the Blackmagic Mini Pro for that compatibility. All right, now these are not really pros or cons. These are kind of issues that I've run into and for the most part have resolved. Uh, the first one was when I first got this device, everything was working great and I was really excited. Uh, but then I got a new laptop and uh, then all of a sudden I could not get this device to work consistently. Uh, specifically, the audio kept dropping out. It would come in and work for a while. Uh, I was getting audio syncing issues that were just driving me mad because everything would be synced towards the beginning of the video and then they'd be out of sync by the end. And I'm like, why, why? Turns out it was a driver problem on my laptop. So, uh, and it wasn't a driver that Acer provided. I have an Acer uh, Predator laptop. They didn't have the latest driver. The Windows update did not have the latest driver. I had to actually download uh, driver booster is some software that scans your hardware and looks for the latest drivers directly from the manufacturers of that hardware that's in your computer. And when I did that and updated the driver, uh, everything worked perfect. I had no problem since then. And that was just a few weeks ago. Uh, but that made me very happy again. All right, the second issue that came up had to do with recording directly to the SD card in this device. And, uh, you know, when I used the provided SD card that came with it, um, I was getting dropped frames, I was getting skipping, I was getting pops and crackles in the audio. I mean, it was a mess and unusable. Uh, so I was thinking, okay, maybe they need a firmware update or something. But what it turns out is this device is very sensitive to what SD card you use. And the one that worked consistently for me was the SanDisk Extreme Pro V30 card. Uh, you know, I, I have V90 cards, which are technically faster, right? But when you put it in this device, it runs at V1, uh, UHS-1 speeds. And apparently, I guess the controller in the card, when it goes to UHS-1 compatibility, it's not as fast as a dedicated UHS-1 card with a V30 designation. So, um, it's very sensitive. That's the only one. And I have about 10 different brands of SD cards here, and I tried a few of them, and, and the, the Extreme Pro was the only one that worked uh, consistently. And I was able to record at 10, 1080p in high quality mode with no problems. So when I saw that other review, when the guy took the Ghost Stream Deck out all by itself with no laptop and recording the entire event onto the SD card, I was like, man, that's a pretty risky game you're playing there. <laughs> So I wouldn't do that. I would use a laptop and make sure I had double dual backups and stuff. But anyway, that's just me, right? And in that uh, vein, there's one other thing that I do that really I didn't see anyone else doing. All right, the casing on this device is all plastic. And then we have a couple of vents on the side to dissipate the heat. But the bottom of this is all metal. And this gets extremely hot. I mean, the top never gets hot, right? Because it's plastic. But the bottom, oh my God. Uh, the bottom of the device and also the surface of the desk that it's sitting on gets extremely hot. I mean, I think dangerously hot. 
And I don't think this is an uncommon sy symptom for devices like this because if you search online for uh, Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro overheating and getting hot, uh, you'll find thousands of threads. So I think this is a, just like I said, a common symptom. And to be fair, before I did this modification, it was working perfectly fine with no problems. And I, I used it all day long for eight, 10, 12 hours and no issues with it overheating and, and malfunctioning, but it worried me how hot my desk was getting. So I just made a couple of risers out of uh, just this foam blocks here. I just cut them out of some packaging I had to raise it up off the desk to create some additional airflow and also to get it off of my desk so it doesn't burn the top of my desk. Uh, the other thing I did, and this is for my own peace of mind, is uh, you can see on the bottom, I glued a giant heat sink to the bottom, uh, again, to help dissipate the heat because heat is the enemy of electronics. And if you want your electronic devices to last longer, keep them cool. So I did these things for really my own peace of mind because I truly like this device and I want it to last a long time. Uh, so if you get this device, I recommend that at the very least you buy like some little half inch rubber feet that you can get at the hardware store and stick those on the bottom to at least get it off the desk. Uh, and if you want to go as all out like I did and get a heat sink for it, it's only like 15 bucks. Uh, I'll put a link down below to the one that I got that fits it perfectly. I'll also have my affiliate links down below for this device if you're interested, and I'll get a few dollars on qualified purchases. As you know, they go to help support the channel and the work that I do here, and they're greatly appreciated. But I can recommend this device. I'm going to be using this going forward as my main HDMI switch box. Uh, it's been very reliable since the uh, driver updates. And uh, just think about the pros and cons that I talked about. And if none of those are deal breakers for you, they weren't for me, I think you'll be very happy with this device. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.